Hello gorgeous ones, Dr. Lucy here with an episode of Cooking, Coaching and Conversations. Now you'll notice my lighting's a little bit different today so, and that's part of the reason why I'm late. Tech. The, um, I have a ring light that holds my phone and you know normally kind of casts some great awesome light. Anyway, I've pressed the on button and it's decided not to work. So luckily being a, you know, famous cooking star. I happen to have an extra light, so I've got this sort of fancy light over here. So apologies for the shadows. But anyway, let's crack on because I've got 25 minutes to produce for you lovelies a beautiful low carb meal made from real food that you can get onto your table in really no time at all. So I'm just putting on my thing so that it's nice and hot. I'm cooking, what will I call it? Maybe cheesy chicken surprise. That sounds a bit naff. But anyway, basically I've got some chicken thighs. I tend to buy the thighs these days more than the breasts and part of the reason is that they don't dry out. Breasts kind of dry out a lot. So um, I'm just going to fling these in. I'm just going to chop them roughly first. But I'm also just going to pop in some olive oil. Oh, I should have got the one that's already open. Give me a sec, darling. Give me a sec. I'm, um, I'm wearing my gym gear today because I'm off to Pilates later, or as, as we like to call it in my house, Pilates. Um, and so for once in my life, I'm actually not rushing in the door from work and I had a few minutes to get changed. Unfortunately, as you know, I'm always trying to get the bloom and other computer worked up so that I can chat to you instead of doing this because that's my other option. Hello Anne from Yapoon, how are you lovely? Anne, Jan, I can see you. So I'm just going to whack in, you know my favourite, chopped onion, it's always in the freezer for me. Oh no, I'm just pulling in a few bits. I've just got this chicken and seriously, I know if any of the, if there's any chefs here, turn away now because the way I'm literally hacking into this chook, I'm sure people would be having a heart attack. But really, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be small enough to cook evenly and, um, and, and not choke you when you're eating into it. So um, I've got a kilo and a half of chicken thighs and that works out to be about three, six, eight or so chicken thighs. Now, if I had some bacon in the fridge, this would go really well with it, but I don't, so bad luck. You know my cooking, it's always just what's in the fridge. People often ask me, you know, what's your shopping list like? So basically, it, I don't know what it's like. It's like I, I go, I, every week I order some chicken. Um, I'll order a couple of things of mince. If we're feeling in the mood for barbecue, I'll order some steak and maybe some, I've got some really good low carb burgers that are just meat and some seasoning, nothing else in them, a bit of onion. Um, and then if, if the week is coming along and it doesn't look like I'm going to use all of those, let's whack them in the freezer. I always order some salmon because I love salmon and my daughter eats salmon. So, and salmon is one of my, on my superfood list. So that onion's just going and then I'm just going to whack all this in. Now, one of the things that you can do so, people, okay, food safety, people go, oh, well, you can't mix. If I was now chopping vegetables that are going into here, I can use the same chopping board. But if I'm chopping vegetables that are going to a salad, then obviously I can't. And the reason for this is the salmonella thing. But out of good habit, I am just going to pop that over there. And then the rest of my thing. So what I'll do, I'll just stir this a little bit. So um, this dish, so simple. Now, I'm going to show you, I don't know if you can see it, but basically you can see there's chicken in there. It's really roughly chopped. And just making sure I don't set, electrocute myself with the cord here. And I'm just going to do this. And you'll excuse me while I do this because I want to see who's looking. Katrina, Elaine, hello lovelies. You've probably got a lovely view of my cleavage then, but uh, it's fine. Um, because I don't have, as I said, I haven't quite got the 
the thing where I know there are people that can do it where they've got their phone on one and their computer on the other and that helps you be able to see Susan Gorgeous. How are you, lovely? Um, so I'm just giving this a big fat stir. And what I'm going to do is brown it. But you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to actually cook at the whole thing. Um, you're not just... I'm just turning this heat up. Um, because if you don't cook the whole thing, then... Um, yeah, my thing's having a little tantrum. Ah, oh, there we go, turning it up a bit higher. Um, browning it just gives that chicken a little bit of extra flavour, but if you don't do it, it doesn't matter. Um, I might even fling in a bit of... See, now because I'm cooking everything right, I can use this same manky chicken board, but if I was, as I've said to you before, if I wasn't cooking everything, then I would get a fresh board. Have you seen this technique for garlic? You basically get your thing, you get the palm of your hand and you flatten it on and it just splits the garlic and off you go. I, I haven't got, I don't use one of those squisher things, just another implement to clean. And um, basically I just, makes it so simple to peel. You do end up with some garlic stinky hands, but you know, that's what soap's for. So, a um, bit of garlic bit of chip chopping um, and by the time this is chipped now I don't like to put the garlic right in at the start with the onions I know some recipes say fry garlic and onions together but you know what happens the garlic gets all burnt and when it's burnt burnt garlic is bitter there you go see maybe I am a chef I know stuff um, so anyway I'm just gonna fling that in there so this is looking good it's browning up now have you, hopefully you've all had a, a good week. I'm feeling, today, Melbourne afternoon, autumn in Melbourne. I'm gonna tell you one thing about Melbourne. You know, you all know the weather's rubbish, but autumn is my favorite time of the year because usually you get some lovely crisp mornings and you get some afternoons and there's no wind. I've decided if there's one thing I hate in life, it's wind. I don't care whether it's hot wind, cold wind, dry wind, wet wind, I just, hate wind. Maybe I was a sock in another life and got, you know, hung on the line or something. Who knows? Anyway, so now what I'm going to do is whack in some mushrooms. Again, there was a half a packet, no chopped mushrooms. If you want to chop some mushrooms, go for it. I've got some other mushies in the fridge that I will actually get out and chop later. But again, remember the idea of this cooking show is to show you that you can cook quickly and easily, still feed your family well, and you don't have to have a lot of time or even a lot of skill. <laughs> now, this bit here, just some cream cheese. Um, so I'm just gonna whack in about half a block. I've no idea whether that's gonna be right or not. If I need more, I'll put some more in later. So I'm just going on, I've actually got a clean knife. I'm not using chicken knife for the, um, for the filly. So now what I do here, right, is I make a little hole in the middle of this mix of um, chicken and mushroom and I'm just going to dump this bit in. And that just will go in there. That'll just sort of melt away. This is going to be the basis of our sauce. Now, some flavouring. So you know, you know my recipe? Pick some protein, pick a couple of veggies, add some fat, add some flavour. Protein is the chicken, the veggies are the mushroom, the onion, and I've got a few green things here, and I'll just see how the dish looks as to whether I chop up some cabbage and pop that in. I've also got some zucchini, and if I'm feeling really fancy, I've actually got some broccoli over here. So the flavour, mingle. This is garlic and ranch. Just popping it there, I don't know if you can see it. Um, I remember I shake them and the reason for that is there's no anti-caking agents or fillers so they will sometimes clump together. I've got to tell you, I rarely use the little dots around the side um, because, I don't know why, I just like to fling in a big wad of it. So I just use this front bit and I, I just pop a bit in. Good. And that then is the flavour for this amazing sauce. So what I'm going to do now 
while that's all sorting, I'm going to put the lid on. That'll just look a bit quicker. I've got cheese nice over here in case I decide to put new cheese in. So the knife and the cheese are separate. I can go get back to Manky Chicken Board if I want to. If you wanted to get a fresh board, feel free. But I'm trying to minimise my washing up. So it's part of I'm going to actually chop up a zucchini. Zucchini doesn't take very long to cook. And you'll note that I do not do lots of chopping. I basically just... So I don't know if you can see this. This is my non-chef chopping style. I get two. I flip the ends so they're now together. And then I just chop them at the same time. It's the opposite of that thing where you do the ah uh, with your nails. But it's very efficient. And I don't I have not yet chopped off a finger. So that's helpful. So you know if my veggies are like... Something brown, something green, something red. So the brown is the mushrooms. The green is going to be this zucchini that I'm pulling in. Now the red, your options could be some capsicum, but I'm doing some sun-dried tomatoes, which I'll pop in at the end. I don't like them at the... If you put them in too early, they turn into mush. You'll remember from a couple of weeks ago, it might have even been last week, I can't remember now, I was talking about the sun-dried and saying how they, they are stored in canola oil and that bothers me. But I tend, in the olden days, I would have flung all this oil in because of all the herbs. Now I don't. I pick the tomatoes out and drain them a bit. If you wanted to be super precious, you could wash them, that's fine. One of um, our lovely Momentum members mentioned a brand that is just stored in a, um, like a, a alfoil pack, so there's no oil in with it. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably rehydrate those in some olive oil and some herbs if you wanted that sort of marinated flavour. Now, this is the other thing I've got here. So, I'm going to give this a little stir in a minute because that cheese will have melted, which it has. Now, it makes it quite thick and, oh no, it actually doesn't, I'm telling lies there. The water from the chicken and the um, zucchini that's now going in has actually made it <laughs> it makes it quite thick it makes it quite runny um, I don't know, you won't be able to see but from where I'm looking I've got that low battery thing that's come up on my screen and I'm slightly panicking that I'm going to run out of battery before I finish cooking this but anyway it'll all work out as it always does so what I'm going to do because cream cheese doesn't have buckets of flavour I'm actually just going to fling in a bit of parmesan I'm going to the cheese knife, not the chicken knife, um, just to open this and uh, don't look at my very um, unsatisfactory knife technique. I'm not using chicken board. If I had another board handy, I would, but since I don't, I'm just going to be very careful and not cut it on the bench. Now, I'm just actually, you know, you could grate it if you want, but what's the point? Because it's all going to melt in, so I'm just going to chop it into a few little cubey things. Pop that in because parmesan has a really nice kind of flavour. Fling that in there. Now, if I give this a stir, oh, I can probably even turn the heat down, it's boiling away there. This is almost done. Like seriously, what time is it? 20 past. So that's 15 minutes. So all I have to do now is a little bit of raw chook still. We certainly don't want that. So all I have to do is leave that to have a little bubble away and decide whether I want to add any more vegetables or any more cream cheese based on your, so you for you or me for me, my particular tastes. I'll probably add, as I said, I'm going to add these and tell you what else you could add if you wanted to. A little bit of sour cream right at the end though, you just stir that through. I'm going to fling in a little bit more cheese because having a look at it, it's a little bit watery. So. I've done a kilo and a half, God, making a, mouth, a mess of this. I've done a kilo and a half of cheese, <laughs> kilo and a half of chicken, and now I've got three quarters of a packet of cream cheese, which again, oh, I just wouldn't add in like that. You could use plain old cream if you like, but cream cheese just gives it a little bit of an extra thing. If you're dairy free and you wanted to do this, you can do it with coconut cream. Um, you can use different spices if you want. You could, you know, this is the basis of my satay. It's the basis of a whole lot of different things. Um, 
what I would love, if I lived by myself, I would add olives into this, but I have a husband that abhors olives and he can sniff even the whiff of an olive. And so I add the olives to mine right at the end. Okay, so that's looking really good. Now, it's a tiny bit watery, and I don't know, again, I'll see if you can, I can show it to you without burning myself, Ooh, or throwing it all over the bench. It's a tiny bit watery, right? So, in fact, if I do this, you'll see the sauce is a bit, can you see that? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it to sort of, you know, do that thing called evaporating, reduce is the word I think chefs use. I'm just going to leave it to reduce down. I'm not going to bother with the cabbage. I don't think it needs that. What I am going to do is, like that back is walking, so I can still talk to you, is a little taste test. So, again, let it cool down. Hmm, that's good. That's good. And yeah, I might add in a little bit of salt. And again, if I'm adding the olives to mine, I probably wouldn't need the salt. It's quite salt. It actually feels quite salty. And so really, I'm just going to let that reduce, fling in these tomatoes, and we're done, babies. And that, like literally 15 minutes. So I can't tell you how easy it is to make really good, delicious um, meals following the Builder Plate formula. I don't meal prep, I don't meal plan. I just always make sure I've got some sort of protein in the fridge, some sort of vegetables. You can see I'm just sort of picking it out. I'm not using the oil at all. Um, some protein, and again, the protein. What, you know, people go, oh, what's some protein? Well, you know, chicken, meat, fish, eggs, bit of dairy, that's your protein. I wouldn't use dairy solely as your protein, unless you're vegetarian. And the reason for that is that dairy is a little bit insulogenic. So again, depends on what your aim is. If you're trying to lose some weight, you want to keep your insulin nice and low and dairy can sometimes um, interfere with that process. Or if you've got autoimmune thingies, again, you might want to keep your dairy low. Um, and this is quite, quite dairy. But as I said, you could, if you wanted to, swap out the cream cheese and the parmesan and just use a coconut cream that will give you a different flavour obviously, more coconutty and you could put a curry in if you wanted to. Now I'm having a look here uh, and noodles, yes you could certainly put in the zucchini as zoodles. Um, I made zoodles the other week, I'm a tiny bit, I used to call myself lazy, remember I don't use that word anymore, I uh, like to make good use of my time and the zoodles are a bit fiddly. So if I was really keen on having some noodles, I would do that. Otherwise, I'm just happy to put it in. And uh, have a look. And again, I'm looking at that going, yep, not quite enough red. <laughs> I don't know, the balance. The balance of colors is important. Pulling a few more of these in. I'll definitely be chucking out the oil, so don't worry about that. And that's really it, darlings. So please remember, cooking good food for your family, this is enough for a family. Okay, there's a one and a half kilos of chicken. One zucchini, I could probably put in another one. There's a, a, some onion, and then just three quarters of a block of cream cheese. I don't know, a snib of Parmesan. You can add more if you want later on when you're dishing it up, you can add some. Then if you wanted to, again, as I said, it's quite still quite watery, you can reduce it down or the other option is that you add in something like some cauliflower rice and that will absorb up a lot of that water. What I'm gonna do though is leave this on the boil for uh, maybe five minutes and it'll be mad. Darlings, I'm gonna go. I have a coaching call after this and then I have pilates, or for those of you who missed it, my pilates, hence my kind of sporty attire. Um, but please stay well. If you're missing watching us in the mornings, it's because we're now over in our group, which is called Low Carb Real Food. Um, so just kind of go to our page and you press the button that says join group. Low Carb Real Food. Um, one of the things I also just wanted to give a little plug for today is our podcast, new podcast episode is out. It's one of my faves, one of our things that we're passionate about talking about and it's called 
you cannot hate yourself thin. So for anybody out there who spends a bit of time in what we call purgatory, where you're berating yourself, where you're wishing you did things differently, where you think that you're hopeless, this is going to be an episode for you. All right, my loves, I'm going to schlep round and uh, turn the button off and I will see you next week with another episode of Cooking, Coaching and Conversations. Bye, darlings. Take care. I need to get a person, don't I? Someone who will do this. <laughs> Bye, loves.